Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for coming today. I'd like to thank Representative Stevens, who's behind me, um, uh, Kristen Tulo from the Humane Society for setting this up, and Dr. Daugherty from the PVMA. Um, we're just so delighted to have you all here. This new legislation has made such a tremendous impact on our work, and I'm going to let everyone else talk a little bit, talk more about that. But um, our humane law enforcement team here at the Pennsylvania SPCA covers 23 counties in Pennsylvania. And time and time again, our officers are doing 10, eight, up to 8,000 investigations per year, saving animals from cases of cruelty and abuse. But then we find that the laws in the state didn't stack up to the, penalty, to the, to the veracity of the crime. So these, this change in law has made just, will make a tremendous impact on our state. And um, so we, today we're going to focus more on the tethering component of the law, which is a very important critical component, and I'll leave it to Officer Wilson to talk about that. So I'm going to just hand it over to uh, Representative Stevens, who sponsored the legislation that we are all so proud and, and thrilled with. Thank you. Hey, buddy, how you doing? You want to join me? <laughs> So look, I really appreciate the opportunity to be here. Thank you so much, uh, Kristen, for, for helping put this together and, and certainly um, uh, to the Pennsylvania SPCA for hosting us today. Uh, what a terrific uh, location and a great opportunity for us to see um, this bill in action. And you know, as I drove in, I think it was really telling and fitting, frankly, that I drove by uh, St. Christopher's Hospital on my way here. Um, you know, one of the reasons I embrace and, and fight so hard on the animal cruelty front is because I was a prosecutor for 10 years prosecuting child abuse cases. And the data shows uh, strong links between those who abuse animals and those who abuse children and those who commit acts of domestic violence. So, um, you know, it's, uh, it's sad but fitting, I think, that um, children who may be abused and need uh, medical treatment are uh, just a block away from animals who may have been abused and need some veterinary care. Um, and so, uh, you know, it might be great if we can get the two of them together. I think they might help one another heal quite a bit. Um, and I understand that some programs uh, do exist here at the Pennsylvania SPCA to involve children uh, with, uh, with some of the animals, and I think that's a terrific initiative. You know, <clears throat> this bill is so important, uh, and it, it does cover a lot of ground. There's a lot of components to it. Uh, the tethering piece is one that I'm particularly proud of. Uh, you know, we uh, in the legislature have struggled for about a decade trying to get some tethering parameters in place. And, uh, and a bill like this, a comprehensive bill like this, that's um, as far reaching and, and frankly as, as strong as this bill is, doesn't happen on its own. It requires a lot of help and a lot of partners. I like to say that democracy is a team sport. And, um, and we had a great team in this initiative. You know, obviously the animal organizations from the Humane Society, uh, the Federated Humane Societies, the Pennsylvania SPCA, and a number of the other uh, animal advocacy groups that you might ordinarily think of were terrific supporters. Um, the, the citizen advocates across Pennsylvania really um, were a, a huge part of getting this bill across the finish line uh, in pretty short order. I, you know, I started putting this together about a year ago, um, so less than a year in the legislative timeline from, um, you know, the first draft up until the governor's signing is, uh, is, I mean, that's like rocket speed for the legislature, let me tell you. Um, so, but we had a lot of partners. I know Senator Killian is going to be joining us from the, from the Senate, um, Senator Scavello and, and uh, Senator Alloway, just a lot of great partners over in the Senate. We had some great uh, support in the House as well from uh, Representative Ryan Bizarro, uh, my colleague from the other side of the aisle and the other side of the state. He's up in Erie, um, and, uh, and we work together to, to get this thing across the finish line as well as uh, Representative Mark Keller in the House. But then you had, uh, on top of that, a number of other organizations you might not ordinarily think of. You have the Pennsylvania FOP, the Pennsylvania District Attorneys Association, the Center for Children's Justice. As I mentioned, there's a strong law enforcement uh, concern here with the links between child abuse and animal abuse. And for those reasons, you saw some of these other groups engaging in this process and really, help, uh, really helping to move this process forward. So, Look, we got the bill done, we all worked together and got the bill done, and now we've got some critical next steps. We've got to help educate the public. We've got great new tethering standards in place. Now, we're not advocating that somebody go out and tether their dog, but if they are, we want to make sure that they're doing so fairly, humanely, uh, and safely for the animal, frankly, and for humans. Um, you know, we'll hear that, uh, you know, 
the, some of the concerns about a dog that's been on the end of a chain can be pretty dangerous. So uh, we want to make sure that doesn't happen. And, um, and we've got to get out and educate the public. That's why I'm so glad to see so much media here today to help spread the word about some of these provisions. And then on top of that, we've got to engage in training for our humane police officers and, and uh, frankly, our, our other law enforcement officers. Because now that we have felony con uh, uh, convictions for the most egregious animal abuse, uh, we're going to have a, a lot more scrutiny. We're going to need a, a lot more law enforcement focused on these types of initiatives. And we've got to make sure these cases are airtight so that when our DAs get them in those courtrooms up at the Court of Common Pleas, those felony convictions stick. And, uh, and those people, um, you know, are forced to forfeit their animals, as is required by the bill, and uh, obviously pay for their care, which I know is so important here at the Pennsylvania SPCA as well. So thank you so much for having me. I certainly appreciate the opportunity. I'm not sure who's next. Kristen, is it you? Or, okay, great. <laughs> Hello, good morning. I'm Kristen Tulo with the Humane Society of the United States. And of course, a big thank you to the PSPCA for hosting us today. And also to Representative Stevens, we can't give more of a round of applause. Like we should give a big one again. So thank you for all of your support. And Senator Killian. And Senator Killian will be here as well. And he really helped to move this bill through the Senate. Um, and just for clarification purposes, uh, tethering a dog, that term is used to describe any time a dog is fastened to a fixed object. And continuous tethering can cause psychological damages where a normally docile dog could become anxious and aggressive to dogs with cases like this right behind here on this poster where there are physical damages. Tanner came to the animal care sanctuary at 10 years old. He had no muscle mass, was barely able to walk. After spending 10 years on the end of a chain, he spent the last few months of the, in the comforts of a loving home. But cases like Tanner's are not an isolated incident, and we'll hear from Officer Wilson shortly. Oftentimes there's embedded collars in the neck where, and we'll also hear from the PVMA about the damages of tethering as well. And so this bill is a step in the right direction for those dogs that are tethered as a means of confinement. The Humane Society of the United States, the Pennsylvania Vet Medical Association, and an increasing number of state and federal agencies, including the USDA, have positions against anti-tethering. So without further ado, I do want to give a big shout out to my friend and colleague, Officer Wilson, who we are so fortunate to have here leading a demonstration on the new section of the anti-tethering law step by step. And we also have the Pennsylvania Vet Medical Association who will speak to the medical concerns as it relates to tethering. So Officer Wilson, and we'll hand it over to you two. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so there are many new aspects to the statute, and as an officer enforcing animal cruelty statutes across the Commonwealth um, for a number of years, uh, one of the biggest steps for us is always education of owners. We are not interested in taking animals from individuals with good intentions and a strong desire to make improvements in their animals' lives. So um, the first step is all about having the right equipment. And so one of the important pieces to the legislation uh, includes having swivels so that the animals have freedom of movement and um, it helps to reduce the likelihood that an animal will actually be uh, uh, tangled in their lead and in their tether. Um, we've had a number of cases over the years where animals have actually died as a result of not being able to untangle themselves um, and having improper collars. So when you're starting at the base, you want to have a base that is um, one that has one of these swivels on the end so that the animal's uh, lead can swivel and move and provide more movement for the animal. Additionally, we have a demo dog here who's going to help me today. Come here, Zoe. Zoe is from one of our cases, so she's going to help me today. in Pennsylvania. Um, so you'll see Zoe has a nice collar that's fitting her well. Um, we also have a collar here that is a um, 
color that has a fastener on it. These are both good options for dogs, and she's going to sit for me nicely. You want to make sure the length of your tether is at least three times the size of your dog. So you measure that from nose tip to base of tail, and you do that three times, but the minimum length is 10 feet. So this cable here is the minimum length, which is 10 feet. So you need your tether to be at least this long. And you'll notice right here that these are swivel latches as well. It allows, again, movement and prevention of tangling for your dog that is tethered. Um, so with that, it is always best to use a corded product that is coated because you don't have to worry about um, the weight. It's a lightweight but very durable product so that you don't have to worry about your animal getting loose. Another option for you if you don't want to do the um, stationary is to do an aerial um, device that, that actually gives your animal a room to run. So it gives your animal running space uh, back and forth. And that allows them to exercise and do some normal movements. Additionally, you want to make sure the animal has access to shade at all times, that they have access to shelter, which will keep them cool in the summer, warm in the winter, and allow them to stay dry from the uh, rain or snow. And then additionally, as always, uh, no more than nine hours on their tether. And uh, that will keep them nice, safe, and well socialized. Because again, these are companion animals. I'll let Zoe go. Um, <laughs> these are companion animals, and they do best when they're actually with us um, and uh, part of the family. So I will turn it over to the doctor today. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Dr. Tina Doherty. I'm the current president of the Pennsylvania Veterinary Medical Association. Um, basically, we are so thrilled to have this bill uh, come into play here and thank Representative Stevens and of course the Humane Societies and all the all the the shelter groups that have contributed to this veterinarians of course are extremely concerned about um, any kind of cruelty to animals and of course most people think of cruelty as being um, you know, dog fights or cock fights or things like that. But, you know, even something as simple as the tethering can actually lead to a lot of trauma. As Kristen had mentioned earlier, the psychological trauma to dogs, not, not, even, not even counting the fact that animals really are intelligent creatures and need some sort of enrichment. So being tethered outside all day does not really do anything for their mental capacities. And it's really important for us to take that into consideration. And so when Officer Wilson mentioned the nine hours maximum out of a 24 hour period, that's what we're trying to address. Again, that socialization is so important. And we want to prevent problems that can occur from constant tethering, whether collars become irritated, possibly possibly even um, causing so much inflammation and damage to the skin of the neck that it grows into the animal's skin. Um, you know, I've, I've seen those cases more than I care to even think about. And um, the other things that we need to think about are, you know, what, what kind of damage even short periods of time outside can cause. So we have to take it into consideration, you know, what time of year it is. For instance, in the summer, we're much more likely to have animals dehydrate. We're much more likely to have animals suffer from heat stroke. We're much more likely to have respiratory distress in these animals, and especially with certain kinds of breeds. You know, those, those sort of, what I always used to tell kids with the smush-faced breeds, you know, the little dogs that have problems breathing even in a perfectly air-conditioned room. If they're outside for long periods of time, they're going to have extreme problems. And even in the winter time, we have to worry about what can happen in as short as 30 minutes. In as short as 30 minutes, animals can become hypothermic. The smaller they are, the less exposure they can take outside. And the other concern is that even uh, in a 30-minute period of time, animals can begin to develop frostbite, not only in their paws where they're exposed to the cold, damp snow or rain, but also some animals don't have a lot of fur on their ears, and their ear tips are very, very thin. And so those 
parts of the body can also be subjected to frostbite and animals can literally lose toes and ear tips and so forth from the elements. So in taking that into consideration, I think this tethering law is like one of the greatest things that we've had coming out um, to support veterinarians helping to support the community in taking care of animals. So thank you again for that. All right, so I think, um, I think my, uh, my colleague, Senator Killian, may be uh, tied up, and uh, I know he was on his way, but um, you know, maybe he'll get here shortly. But I, look, again, I just want to thank everybody from, uh, from the Veterinary Medical Association to the Humane Society of the United States to the Pennsylvania SPCA, um, and frankly, all those advocates. I mean, there were thousands and thousands and thousands of people that were contacting their state representatives and state senators that were writing letters, sending emails, coming to the Capitol, um, you know, it was unbelievable the push that we had from across the Commonwealth that got this bill across the finish line. So uh, certainly uh, thanks to all them and thanks to all of you for being here. And hopefully folks will learn that, um, you know, no prong ch collars or choke collars and, uh, and uh, tether your dogs safely if you have to tether them at all. So thanks so much for being here. We appreciate it. Thank you.